Hello there and welcome to the Bicycle Diaries and welcome to the 1970s. So for today's ride I've decided to come to an area where I spent many of my formative years growing up as a child. Now, um, I'm only about 20 minutes away from where I live now, but uh, it already feels like a world away. I lived here in the 1970s and I've never actually really ridden my bike around here, so it's gonna be interesting to see what kind of routes I can come up with. The first part of today's ride actually traces my walk to school, so it's only about uh, two kilometers or so but it has a couple of very, very steep downhill sections. And as you can imagine, being a, an eight and nine year old walking to school for, first thing in the morning, um, yeah, I wasn't really happy about that. And to this day, I still have a dislike of walking. The next part of the route, I'm just gonna make up as we go along, but uh, if all goes well, we'll be going out to a place called Frencham and then up to a place called Hindhead uh, to visit a very special place in literary history. These high banks are very, very typical of the area and I completely forgot just how hilly it was. Another reason for coming back here was just to see if anybody had a connection to this area. Um, if you're watching last week's vlog, I went round to Gosport and I was just overwhelmed by how many people commented saying that they knew the area. So if you know this part of Hampshire around Headley, Borden, give me a shout. So here I am at Frencham Ponds and uh, I've got about 10 kilometres on the computer um, but that's because I've kind of gone the long way around. When I was a kid we only lived about five kilometres away uh, and on hot days we would walk out here and swim in the larger of the two ponds. This is only the smaller one.
just reached the village of Chert in the Surrey Hills and if things weren't tough enough they're just about to get tougher. So I'm on the main Farnham to Hindhead Road and this is yet another one of the reasons why I wanted to come over here and ride this route. Basically uh, I'm on a long climb now and it's probably one of the longest climbs you can do in this area. I've been on the climb now for about a couple of kilometres and the gradients averaged between four and seven percent and it's only set to go on until I reach Hindhead. Now I've, I've no idea how far that is on the bike. I've driven it many times so I've got a rough idea but obviously riding a bike and driving a car you get a very very different impression of distance so I'm just going to plug on and uh, enjoy the ride. red light is not what you need on this climb. There we go, I've made it to the top of the climb and it was pretty much as I expected, although it was a fair bit longer than I thought. Uh, the gradients were pretty tough at the bottom. It was starting off at about 12, 14%, then it went down to about seven. And then once it started leveling out, it didn't go much below about 5%. Uh, according to my calculations, it was about six kilometers long. So pretty tough. So here we are then at the top in the village of Hindhead and let's go and have a look at the Undershore Hotel. So the Undershore was once the home of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the creator of Sherlock Holmes. Now he lived many years of his life there and wrote many of the Holmes stories including the Hound of the Baskervilles in that very building. Now, I'm pleased to see that uh, it's now uh, being used again. Uh, its future was in debate for many years. Uh, I went there myself in the mid-90s when it was uh, a restaurant, uh, and then it was just derelict, and they were going to uh, knock it down and turn it into flats. But I c I'm, I'm very pleased to see that they've kept a lot of the original building. Now, oddly enough, uh, one of my favorite home stories is The Solitary Cyclist where a young school teacher gets a job where she has to cycle six miles from Farnham Station. Now she doesn't specify where she's cycling to, but Farnham Station is six miles from the Undershore and the road that she would have taken is the very road that I've just cycled along. So I expect she had pretty strong legs climbing up that hill. So heading for Headley Down now and the good news is that the uh, the road is pretty much downhill with the wind behind me and we've just crossed over back into Hampshire and the first village we come to is Greyshot which also happens to be the birthplace of the actor Colin Firth who was in things like Love Actually, Bridget Jones Diary and loads of other stuff.
So here we are at the end of the ride. That's 26 kilometers in the bank of fitness. Uh, not quite as long as I thought it was going to be, but still a fairly respectable ride nonetheless, particularly with that quite hard climb up to Hindhead. I must admit I'm a little bit disappointed now because I've come to the little shop that I used to visit when I was a kid to come and get my sweets and comics and things like that. I was going to treat myself to a nice cool drink at the end of that ride but uh, unfortunately it's all closed down and it looks like it's been closed for quite a while unfortunately. Uh, yep, the march of time for you. Thanks for watching.